Hey everyone, this is Coloring Chemist. My name is Connie and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So this is, it's sort of a tutorial, but I'm not actually going to show you how I did this because I didn't film it. <laughs> but what I will do is I will kind of walk you through looking at the finished product. And I, I gotta say, this is entirely um, viewer inspired. So thank you so much to you guys for all the comments you leave. It, it just, you know, I, I was talking in some previous videos about struggling with starting a page and, you know, worrying about perfectionism and all those overthinking, all those things. And I don't know, in February, I, you guys inspired me I, to just do it. <laughs> Sorry, Nike, I don't mean to steal that, but um, yeah, to, to just try things, to um, experiment, and whatever happens, happens. So I'm going to move this because there's a bit of a glare there. I'll, I'll come back to that in a minute. If you guys have watched my finished or completed pages for, I think, December and January, I had been doing some things in this book and it's all it is. It's a creative haven book. It's by Marty Noble and it's snowflake mandalas. And for some reason, it's like I've, I've okayed it within my own brain to just experiment in here. And I don't worry about, you know, will the page turn out? <laughs> will it be okay? I don't know. I, I just, I just go for it. And I had done, um, a mandala in here. When I first started in here, I was just sort of coloring, you know, just sort of typical mandala coloring, lots of alcohol marker and gel pen kind of work. And then I did one with a, um, kind of sunset background. And I did do a tutorial for this one. So I'll, I'll try and remember to link it down below if, if you want to watch that. Uh, <laughs> It was how much of a tutorial it was, kind of a comedy of errors more than anything. But I did this sunset background with uh, gel crayons and I had covered the snowflake with masking fluid and I, it was just a whole thing. But I mean, I think it turned out okay in the end. And then I had done another uh, background with the stencil again. It's, it's some birch trees. That's actually the stencil that I had here. I've been really using, having lots of fun with this stencil. So I'll try and remember to link uh, where I purchased this stencil down below. It's, it was just off of Amazon. It's Craft Treat, that's the company. So yeah. And had done sort of a, you know, kind of a ghostly white. I don't know if you can see that. The lighting is, is challenging today. It's sunny out, but because where my window is, yeah, it's, sorry. So I have some interior lights on here, so. Um, the whole thing is shiny because I did fix it because the trees were just uh, like um, I had covered the whole background in black acrylic marker, like one of these, and then just done a white chalk pastel uh, through the stencil. And then I fixed it because of course that wasn't going to stick to the, to the acrylic. So that's why the whole thing looks shiny like that. That's just the, the fixative I sprayed on. So. When I had shown the, um, this one in, a, in, in the tutorial video that I had done, one of my viewers had suggested, fantastic suggestion, future editing Connie here, the viewer was Annabelle's nine. So thank you so much, Annabelle. Fantastic suggestion. I followed it. Um, what if instead of having the snowflake in front of the trees, have it behind the trees so it looks like it's rising or, or setting or you know and I thought well that's really neat and I also wanted to try and reproduce so I've done this um sunset kind of winter sunset background in a couple of different pictures I did it in um oh that free Christmas uh picture from Melpinini uh Chet's Panigiotu. I did it on that one and I also did it in <clears throat> excuse me a Rita Berman book and I think both of those and this one were all done with gel crayons, but I wanted to see if I could recreate this um, sort of color palettes with something different. In particular, with Distress Oxide ink. Now, I haven't used a lot of Distress Oxide, and I just recently, if you saw <laughs> my January, February haul, I wasn't supposed to be purchasing anything, and then I hurt my back, and 
just all went to heck. But I had purchased a, a number of these. I don't have a complete set because I was thinking that the Distress Oxide, because they have pigment in them, would maybe be easier to blend in coloring books. I have done backgrounds with the Distress Inks, right? I just have these little uh, minis. That's, that's all I have for Distress Ink. I do have the full set, but I just have the minis. And I've done backgrounds with these. It's tricky. There's definitely a learning curve there um, because it's really easy to get lines or to get areas where it's like you've put too much ink down and now it just looks like there's a, a circle of ink, you know. So I thought, well, maybe these will be easier because, of course, these Distress Ink, that's dyes, right? Dyes, by their nature, their chemical nature, uh, for those of you that don't know, I am a, a chemistry teacher. That's my day job. Uh, dyes soak into the the ground that you put them on, meaning the the, the, the substrate, right, that, that you're working on, whether it be paper or whatever. Dyes soak in. Pigments sit on top. Now, I don't know the chemistry of distress. I would love to know the chemistry of distress oxides, but I think that's pretty proprietary. I've never come across anything that talked about the actual chemistry. Um, but I do know, if I remember correctly from Tim Holtz talking about it, distress oxides do have pigment in them. Now, they might also have dye. I don't know, but these do not. So I thought, well, pigments sit on top of your, of your substrate, so maybe they'll be easier to blend in the sense that, you know, if they're a little bit more movable on the page. Dyes soak in right away and they're not terribly movable, right? Uh, whereas pigments would be. So I thought, well, I'm gonna try and recreate that sunset background using some distress oxides and, and you know, see how that goes. And I'm also gonna take that wonderful viewer's tip to put the, I'm gonna, you know, use the tree stencil again, but I'm gonna put the snowflake behind the trees. So. That's what I did. Now, I'm also going to show this in my February completed pages, but I thought maybe you guys might like just sort of a little walkthrough of, of what I did and how I did it. Um, so here it is. There we go. Now, you might be thinking, there's no mice in that coloring book, Connie. <laughs> no, there isn't. The, the little added details, so I don't know if you can see, we've got some, some little mice here. Uh, we've got some lanterns kind of hanging down off a tree branch. We've got extra branches kind of around the top. I don't know if that's maybe hard to see, but um, I can zoom in, in a bit here. And then there's extra sort of foliage, some, some uh, pine trees and things down at the bottom here. Um, those are stamps. So... This is really kind of, I mean, it's a tutorial about the background, yes. Um, but it's also about using stencils and stamps in your coloring books. Now, the, the stencils, um, I think, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm, I think it was Pamela's passion for pencils. Future editing Connie here again. It was not Pamela's passion for pencils, although she is also a wonderful, wonderful, amazing colorist. Um, it was My Colorful Country Life. And it was a video she was doing about two months ago, I think, where she was going through all of her colored Joanna Bassford pictures. And it was the from color um, World of Flowers, and it was a truck, and she had put a forest in the background. Now, it wasn't a black sort of, you know, silhouette forest, but that's kind of where I'd gotten that inspiration. So my apologies, it was My Colorful Country Life, Although Pamela's Passion for Pencils is also a great channel. Is, is that what the channel is called? I think it is. She's, she's a wonderful, wonderful colorist. She's got tons of tutorials. And I had seen her use a tree stencil in the background of a Joanna Basford page, which is kind of where that original uh, idea came from. The stamps, it was sort of a combo thing. Um, Emma, the lovely, lovely Emma from Emma Colors 2020, had done, I think it was a heart page. I believe maybe that was also in a Joanna Basford book. And she had used some Lavinia stamps to put sort of little little ivory, I think it was ivy or some, some sort of foliage tendrils sort of coming down from the heart. And I thought, using stamps, that's great. Now, 
the stamps also, <laughs> the reason why I have these stamps, because I'm not a card maker. I know lots of you guys are, or scrapbookers or, you know, that sort of thing, but I, I've never done that. I've never been into it. But I started watching a channel on YouTube called Inky Bliss, and it's um, um, Lise Taggart, who is a mixed media artist from Northern Ireland. Amazing, amazing lady. And she does these wonderful pictures using inks and stencils. And uh, she does a little bit of drawing, but not much. And stamps. And the majority, in fact, I think all the stamps she uses are Lavinia stamps. And it's a company from Wales. And that's where these little guys came from. And also the, the trees, the extra branches, the little lanterns. And I've, I've, <laughs> fantasy Connie, as, as uh, Lindsay the Frugal Crafter talks about fantasy, Lindsay wants to do things, but reality, Lindsay maybe does them, maybe not. Fantasy Connie thinks she wants to do uh, uh, art journaling in the sense that kind of doing the same kinds of things that Lisa Taggart does on Inky Bliss, where she is creating these, these images using inks and stamps and stencils and you know because I can't draw cannot I have tried now I probably if I tried really hard <laughs> I could probably I don't know learn to draw a little bit but I don't enjoy it and so that was the appeal of stamps to me you know could I have drawn these little mice absolutely not well yes but they would not have looked like mice don't know what they would have looked like but not mice <laughs> so that's the appeal of stamps to me right it's it's a pre-drawn image. Now, Lavinia's stamps I love because their, their stamp line tends to be very sort of whimsical and, uh, I don't know, like fairies and, and, you know, magical forests. They have tons of, of, you know, trees and branches and those kinds of stamps. And they have these little animals. So there's a little mouse holding a little lantern and a little mouse playing a flute. <laughs> And a lot of their stamps are, uh, particularly their animal stamps, are silhouette stamps. So it's not like you get any of the features, right? It's just sort of a black outline of an animal, which I thought was great for this kind of thing where you've got, you know, sort of the sun is setting, night is coming, the sun is coming from behind. So, you know, you wouldn't get details. So that's my thought process there. Um, so what did I do to start? To start, I took masking fluid I covered the entire snowflake, all of the line work, all of the, I mean, it took forever, but that's what I did. Uh, I have been using this guy here, which is the PBO masking fluid marker. You can get these with different tip sizes. This one is, it's like one of those, uh, when you get the acrylic markers, you have to uh, activate and pump and they have, I think it's the medium size. It's not a plastic nib. It's like a felt kind of, or not really felt. I don't know what it is, but it's, it's not a plastic. Well, maybe it is a type of plastic, but it's almost like a foam kind of nib. Maybe that's what that this nib reminds me of. It's a four millimeter nib. Um, and you have to activate this and you have to shake it and the whole bit. So it's, it's very similar to, to those kinds of acrylic marker pens and I just figured out this is refillable which I did not realize because uh, the top screws off and so the top screws off I don't dump it on the page and there's a plug in there I'm gonna move this out of the way because I don't want to get anything on the page um there's a plug in there oh now it's leaking everywhere well done Connie did I get any in the page no I don't think I did okay whoo uh, you do. <laughs> key point there. Don't do it over top of a finished coloring page, but there's a little plug in the top and I just took that plug out. I also have a, um, bottle of the PBO masking fluid, which you can apply with a brush, but I find, and I'm going to move this. I have this, uh, protector page in there just to, cause I had a tab on there to, cause I'm going to show it in my finished pages, but I didn't want to stick the tab on here in case it took the ink off. That's why. But the yeah the, so the masking fluid pen i just took a pipette that i had a disposable pipette because you can't clean it afterwards and refilled that pen because it was getting low 
and yeah, that's what you refill that pan. That's great. So I covered the, the snowflake, all the line work, and then I used blending brushes, just these, uh, these kind here, right? You buy them in a pack off of Amazon. Um, I think I had a different one for the yellows, one for the peachy oranges, uh, one for the blues. And then I did um, like black soot, which is a, a distress oxide color at the very top. And so I did the background. Now, I will say it was a bit of a struggle. Um, here's what I discovered about distress oxide inks. They don't layer well, which I should have known. And maybe I'm doing it wrong. So any of you folks that out there that are familiar or, you know, your, your card makers, your scrapbookers, you're used to using inks, um, particularly distress oxide ink, maybe I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> and if I decide to do this again, if you guys want me to do, you know, a, a kind of filmed kind of color with me on something like this, just let me know and I certainly can do that. Um, but I found that because the Distress Oxide inks are more opaque, they don't layer well. Uh, the gel cranes I was using to do the other backgrounds layer because they're more translucent, right? So then you've got, I don't know if you can see particularly, like right in here, I, I would have liked more of a, when you lay down the orange and then the blue, it almost, when I was doing it with the, the gel crayons, I would get like a purple transition but here I don't. I, it, it just didn't give me the effect that I was hoping for, I guess. It's okay. Um, I also found on this paper, now this is 2015. So this is the old uh, Creative Haven paper. So it's smoother. Um, it's a little bit better quality, I think, than the, the paper they have now. But it's still, I mean, it's still just coloring book paper, right? So it was struggling a bit to take layers and layers of distress oxide. Now, maybe all papers would, I don't know. Like I say, the pigment concept to those inks that I thought would be easier for blending, I think they are easier for blending. You certainly can move them more, but it's also it also makes layering <laughs> harder <laughs> because you're not gonna have one color coming through another color to create a new color, right? Orange and blue, red and blue make a purpley color when you've got translucent inks, but not when they're opaque. So that was a bit of a struggle. But I think I got the general, you know, sort of idea of, of the yellow and then the orange fading into blue and then out into the black. So I, I think we got that. So that's what I did. So I covered the snowflake in the um, masking uh, fluid, did the, the background. I laid across the bottom here Oh, I think I threw it away. I took a piece of cardstock and tore it. And it's the same idea I did uh, on that other sunset background uh, mandala in here. So again, you can watch that tutorial if you want to see. But I just sort of tore it kind of carefully bit by bit to make it kind of, you know, curved, not didn't tear a straight line. And then I just laid it down um, across the bottom here when I was doing all the ink blending. In fact, I think I tacked it down with I had some washi tape or something just to, to hold it there, just so I didn't do, cause I didn't want the sunset to go all the way to the bottom. Cause I knew I wanted to have like a, a, a ground level, right? So cover the snowflake, tack that down, then do the blending. Um, and then, then I took the masking fluid off and <laughs> Again, the, the so much of the struggle I had with the other one where I did the background with gel crayons was when I went to rub to take the masking fluid off, the gel crayon, because again, it's not a dye, it just sits on top of the page. I was smearing the gel crayon into all these areas that I had so carefully masked off. Um, and that was, that was part of my struggle. So I had thought <laughs> that doing this with Distress Oxide ink, I wouldn't get that. But I was wrong. And again, I should have known that because Distress Oxide, there's some pigment there. So it sits. Now I will say it was much less of an issue than when I did this with the gel crayons. 
but there was still some smearing and it was less but still there um so that's part of the reason why and there's probably kind of a if if you can see on the the snowflake there i actually had to color it with like an opaque glitter gel pen that i have now i also did a lot of coloring with uh this guy here which is the white signal but even so i was trying to cover up where some of that smearing had occurred right with the you know the yellow and the orange and what have you so I think the coloring work on the snowflake itself on this particular page is not great, but that kind of wasn't my, that wasn't my main focus, right? So I took the, the masking fluid off. So at this point I've got just the background. That's, that's all I had done. Took the masking fluid off. Then I did the trees. So I did the trees before I started coloring the snowflake. So the trees were this stencil here, right? And I had originally done this using, um, you could see where fits, oh, I don't know. It's right about there. I had done the stencil, something like that. There we go. <laughs> And I had used a blending brush and the black soot distress oxide ink to, to do all the trees. Now you can see on the tree stencil, there are these lines that, that go across. And I think that's because these are supposed to be birch trees. But what that meant was, so I, you know, I did all the, the stenciling. When you take this up, you're going to get lines across all the tree trunks where no ink has gone you know and so you're going to be able to see basically the background through the trees which is not what i wanted for this one and i also found that the black soot wasn't dark enough it, it didn't give me the black that i wanted for the trees so if i remember correctly i think what i did was i just took a black uh, acrylic marker just one like this one of these brush ones and i just colored over the tree trunks because it made a more solid black and that that's what i was looking for then i colored the snowflake so i i did actually color so i i, I had to you know sort of stop coloring you know right as though the snowflake were going behind the trees now i could have colored the snowflake and then did the trees but i wasn't sure if i, I just wasn't sure because this white the white signo gel pen the way i put it on it's it's actually got you can almost feel it's there's a bit of texture like it's it's a bit bumpy so i wasn't sure if i colored the snowflake first and then did the trees if you could see the bumps through the trees i wasn't sure so i did the trees first then i colored the snowflake which was kind of a pain because you know you're coloring right up to these black trees and you have to kind of and i i don't know i did okay um yeah and then you have to kind of stop make sure you don't color on the trees it, it was harder so I colored the snowflake and then, um, oh, then if you can see at the bottom here, can you see on the snow? Ooh, there we go. It was like, I wanted there to be, when you get that sunset kind of light in the winter, um, and it's coming kind of through trees. You get a shadow on the snow, but often shadows on snow look blue. They don't look gray or black. They, they look blue. And so I took, so um, I had taken that, that torn piece of, of cardstock off and was just left with a white area at the bottom here. This is the Faber-Castell, whoops, Faber-Castell Artist Pit Pen, the brush one. This is Light Indigo 220. If you don't own any pit pens, um, which I get because they are expensive, but you can buy them open stock, get this one. <laughs> get this one and get this one. <laughs> this is the White 101 brush. These two, honestly, of all the pit pens, these two are the most used, I think, that I have. The shadows here 
are just this pen. All I did was I just sort of, I don't know, scribbled in <laughs> what I, I mean, I'm not an artist. I, I don't know. And <clears throat> any kind of drawing that I do is always going to be very, what's the word? Impressionistic. <laughs> it's not going to be real. It's not going to be, you know, real looking. I just don't have that talent. So you can see the shadows I put for the trees. I mean, it's, if you look up close, it's just scribbles. You see that? But when you squint or look, <clears throat> excuse me, hang on one sec. Sorry about that. I got a tickle in my throat and I was going to cough and I didn't want to cough in your ear. Um, yeah, so the shadows are just scribbles. I don't know, but you get these blue shadows cast on the snow by the trees. That's what I was going for. I don't know whether it looks like that or not. I hope it does. Um, and at that point, I mean, I could have called it done, but I thought that's when I thought of Emma and, and doing her, her stamps. And the, and I thought of Lisa Taggart and I thought, well, what, what could go wrong? And I don't think it did go wrong. I just thought, well, I'm, I'm going to try. So the first thing I thought was I wanted some extra branches kind of around the top. And that's probably hard to see. I'm looking, the, the recording software I have has a very small um, preview screen at the top, or a preview screen, sorry, for me to see what, what I'm filming. So it's hard for me to tell until I get to the editing um, part whether you guys can see things, but I hope you can. So what I did was I took, sorry, I have a small desk here. Um, I have these Lavinia stamps. Sorry. There's layer there. Maybe I can do it this way. So hopefully you can see that. Um, they're just tree stamps. And what Lisa Taggart does is she takes the stamp and Lavinia stamps are just all, mm, is that called photopolymer? I'm sorry if it's not, uh, silicone. I, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm not that familiar with stamps, but she will just sort of ink. You can see that there. Maybe that's easier to see on the white there. She will just ink the branches at the top here and then just sort of, you know, stamp just as though it's trees sort of coming in from off the page, right? So they're not necessarily branches coming off of these trees. They're just sort of coming in off the page. So I took these, these tree stamps. I can certainly leave a link to, uh, to Lavinia stamps down below as well. Right. Um, I'm not saying you should go out and purchase stamps to do this. I mean, if you, if you wish, or if you have some stamps at home, that's great. You could also draw these in with just a black fine, um, well, your black <laughs> pit pen has that really fine tip, right? If, if you were comfortable, you could draw in all those because really the branches are just squiggles. I mean, that's what they are, right? And then another squiggle comes off the main squiggle. That's, that's branches. So I did that first with the stamps. And then I thought I'm going to use, cause Lisa uses lots of little animals in, in the, the multimedia pictures she does. So I looked through, and if anybody wants me in future, I can certainly do a flip. I have these binders. I think they're Tim Holtz binders. And I have this one that's got different Lavinia stamps. If anyone wants a flip through of that, I can do that if you want. And then I have this second binder that has more just little things and then some of the animals. I don't have all the Lavinia stamps. Um, I can do flip and this is this that's all the stamps I have these two binders that's it uh, but then I took the little mice and they have names I can't think of them but Lavinia stamps does name their animals it's just a lovely company and like I said I've ordered from them um, they send you know they send things I think you can get them on Amazon in different stamp or, or craft stores like um, scrapbook.com, those sorts of things, 
uh, Simon Says Stamp, but you can order directly from them. They're lovely people. They send you little treats with your order. You get a little chocolate, sometimes a tea bag. Um, it's just wonderful. So I stamped the little mice and the inks, and I, I will list the, the inks down below that I, that I used. Um, so these Distress Oxide inks were the ones that I was using for the, the background. So there was some you know, wild honey, spiced marmalade, squeezed lemonade, dried marigold. That was sort of the orange yellow portion, chipped sapphire, and then out to black soot at the top. And then to do the stamping of the, um, the branches and the mice and then the little lanterns, I used this because from what I can tell just from reading, and plus Lisa Taggart uses this ink. This is a really good ink. It's Versifying Claire, and this is Nocturne. This is a really good ink for stamping. It gives really clear, crisp images. I don't know. I don't know anything about stamping. So if I'm wrong on this, you know, you're certainly welcome to gently correct me in the comments, but that's what I used. Um, Lavinia Stamps also has, so they have the animals, they have the, the trees and branches. And they have, I don't know if you can see that. Sorry, there's a glare there. Does that make it easier? Better? No. <laughs> it's like a <clears throat> a little lantern on a... Oh, you can't see that, can you? Maybe you can. It's a, like a little lantern on a, a string. And it came in a set. I think there was two of them. So I did that. I stamped it twice as though it was hanging from, see that? Hanging from that sort of main tree trunk in the middle. It's not super easy to see, I guess, over top the snowflake, but I was just, at this point, I was just having fun. So then I used, they had like a, a, a sort of a pine tree stamp and I did that. Um, they had, I think this is one of those foliage stamps or the, it's called Jip. Uh, GYP and again would just ink more or less of it and um, I, I put the mask back actually did I even have the mask still but to stop the stamp from stamping you know where I wanted the snow just put a piece of paper there and then you know ink the top part of the stamp stamp it and then even if you did get some ink on the part of the stamp where you you know would go below the snow level <clears throat> the paper that you put there stops it, right? And you take the paper, do you, do you know what I mean, right? So if I have, <clears throat> even a, a flat piece of paper, um, you know, say I'm stamping, this is a different stamp, but you know, say I only want, you know, the, the top part of the stamp. So I put a little ink there, but maybe I get a little bit of ink lower than the part I actually want. By putting this paper there then when you go to stamp it's going to stop if even if there's ink on the part of the stamp that you you don't want stamped it's going to stop that right and then you won't get ink hopefully i'm explaining that i'm not a stamper or crafter but i hope that makes sense so i stamped all the branches and of course i had a paper in behind here too so you know i wasn't stamping on my desk if the the stamp went off the edge um, stamped all these, these branches and things down here. Um, I had stamped the mice. I think I went over the mice with my black pit pen. Cause when I stamped it, I, I was having trouble getting really crisp, clear stamps. I don't know if I was doing it wrong. <laughs> um, Maybe because I had so much distress oxide on here, it was, it felt almost like it was resisting it. Like it felt too smooth and I don't know. It could, have, could have totally been user error too. But so I did take the black pit pen. I think I colored over the, the mice cause it, it just wasn't crisp and black enough. Um, I think I even traced over a few of these branches afterwards. Just again, they, they didn't look crisp and black enough. For, and if I look closely, they're very messy. It's not the best stamping job, but I was experimenting. So let's see, at that point, it was just kind of putting sparkle in and embellishing. So the, the snow, if you can see it kind of, 
I mean, the snowflake sparkles, but the snow has got a bit of sparkle. See there? So after I put the, the shadow on, I used the clear Spectrum Noir. Again, I think I mentioned this in previous videos. I prefer this. So it's, it's like Wink of Stella, but it's the Spectrum Noir version. But I prefer this one to the clear Wink of Stella for snow. The Wink of Stella clear has a bit of a silvery tint to it. So, I don't know, I've, I've used it for snow in the past, and it is, I think, a little bit sparklier than this one. But it tends to make the snow, to my eye, look a little dirty, because it's got that silver. Whereas this Spectrum Noir Clear is clear. Like, you put it down, and it's just sparkle. That's all you see. So I like this one better for, for snow. So I went around the mice. <laughs> oh, and I did put a little bit of shadow underneath the, the mice. With this before I put that clear on I don't know because I figured they would be casting shadow I'm terrible at figuring out where shadows should go so I don't know if I did a good job or not but I tried and then I just put this all around and then oh I wanted their little this mouse's little lantern and the lanterns up here to look like they were glowing so what did I do I took some other acrylic paint markers uh, like a really pale yellow and then more of a yellowy yellow and I just sort of put little little lines coming out from the flame. I'm supposed to indicate glowing. I don't know if it did or not. But And then I colored the little teeny flame itself with the yellow um, jelly roll sparkle, the stardust. But I mean, you could use any any glitter. I mean, you could do whatever you want, right? That's, that's just what I did. I don't know if it worked. And then... I think I took a, a uniball white and just put some little... Um, and this is a Lisa Taggart thing. Quite often she'll put on her, her, the black outline of her animals just on the tops, like on the top of their head or like on the top of this little guy's flute, top of his tail, his back. She'll put like little little white lines, like opaque white lines, just as though the, the light, whether it be the moonlight or the sunlight, is striking just the edge, the top edge of them. I don't know if I did it right or not, but I did a little mouse. The, the two little mice there. Um, oh, and then I thought, well, I'm going to put... And this part I, I really regret. But I did it. And now I can undo it. Wink of Stella makes a white. Not a clear. A white um, sparkle pen. So this is, you know, the, the Wink of Stella. It's got the, the brush. And it looks clear and it will actually go on looking clear but as it dries it goes white and i wanted to make like there was snow on some of the larger branches and then on some of the um sort of the branches that i had down at the bottom here so i put this over top but it's kind of hard to control and it didn't really turn out the way i wanted it to <laughs> so <laughs> but i mean i can't take it off now um yeah, and because the stamping had been done with this VersaFine Claire, which is, it's a pigment ink, but it's still um, water-based, I think. Which means, yeah, I think it must be. Even after it was dry, of course, this is wet. So I went to go over top, and it started to smear the ink a bit. So maybe I should have been stamping with, I think I do have, hang on just one minute. I do have this, which is, so this is VersaFine Claire, and this is just called VersaFine. I think this is more an oil-based. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong. Perfect for using watercolors. Yeah, so this says, so... This is perfect for using watercolors to color stamped images, which must mean that once this is dry, it's going to be resistant to water. So maybe this would have been a better choice. I don't know. I don't, like I say, I, I don't know anything about stamping. I was just doing what I was doing. So yeah, I used the White Wink of Stella. Tried to do like snow. Um, there's not... I don't know. You can't really see a whole lot of sparkle where I've done, you know, you probably see it the best there on that tree branch, right? You can see I put white 
it's not like a super opaque white. It's sort of opaque, but um, I can't really see. I was hoping for white with some sparkle, but I don't know. I don't really see that there. Maybe because, you know, this is so sparkly. The snowflake itself is so sparkly. Yeah, I don't know. And I think that was it. So maybe what I'll try and do in the description down below is make a list of the order <laughs> in which I did things, in case anybody wants to try this. Like I say, I didn't think to, to record it because it was just a total spur of the moment. Uh, let's just try this. Why not? Could turn out really badly. Who knows? So it didn't occur to me to, to record it. Um, but I can, you know, give you a list down below in the description of the order in which I did things. And it, you know, you don't even have, you don't have to have to have this book. It was really, I think, more of a, a aha moment for me to say, I can incorporate, you know, th those ideas that I was getting from Lisa Taggart, from watching her videos, from, from doing, you know, she's doing all these beautiful mixed media pieces and she's not doing them in coloring books. She's, she's doing them on, you know, blank pieces of paper, but I can incorporate those ideas here in a coloring book that, I mean, it, it's really, it's just a mandala book, right? I mean, that's all it is. Um, and I can create a page that definitely, I think, doesn't look like a mandala. So yeah, I don't know if that gives you guys any ideas to, to try in different coloring books, different mandala books. Um, you know, even if you've got books that aren't mandalas, if you've got a page where you're thinking, oh, I don't know what to do with the background. If you have some stamps laying around or stencils laying around from, from your crafting or card making, I throw them on there. See what happens. What is the worst that could happen? <laughs> so you guys have really inspired me to try and embrace that mindset. And I, I gotta say, it's kind of freeing. So thank you again. Thank you so much guys for, for inspiring me to let go a bit. Um, yeah. So if you like what you're seeing, you know, consider hitting that, uh, the like button down below, subscribing to my channel, leaving a comment, uh, letting friends know that you found a channel and you know, they might like it too. All those things help my channel to grow. I hope everyone is safe. I hope everyone is well. I hope everyone is enjoying their coloring and I will probably see you, uh, probably next for my February finished pages. I actually did well for me, um, a fair amount, one of which will be this one in February. So, so I'm, I'm excited to share those with you guys until next time, guys, take care. Bye-bye.